Meet the Leopard 2, the Abrams, and the Challenger 2. Some of the most advanced tanks in the world, and they're all heading to Ukraine. I think it's a very important moment in the war. The Ukrainians have been desperate for advanced armor since the war began. Hundreds of tanks. But how will this expensive commitment from Western allies be used on the battlefield? I personally think they are the game changer. And are new tanks enough to win the war? Ukraine has been asking NATO and its allies for Western tanks since the war began. And after almost a year, they're finally getting what they want. These are the three new tanks heading to the battlefield. The Challenger 2 from the UK, the USA's Abrams, and Germany's Leopard 2. The Challenger 2 is a dynamic and highly mobile piece of armored machinery, but the UK is only sending 14. So experts don't believe it will make a significant tactical difference. And while the Abrams is arguably the best in the world, it requires more training to use and might not arrive on the battlefield until 2024. That leaves the Leopard 2. The Leopard 2 is one of the most modern tanks in the world. They can fight at night as well as they can fight during the day. They can also fire very accurately on the move. The Ukrainians will be facing variations of Russia's main battle tank, the T-72. Though comparable in some respects to the Russian tank, the Leopard 2 is a step up. And crucially, they're readily available across Europe. The tank is widely stocked. So I believe there are up to 2,000 uh, of, of these Leopard tanks um, in Europe. Ukraine has asked for 300 Western tanks. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz says a coalition of countries will deliver 112 Leopard 2s by April. And there's reports of older Leopard 1s being released. But not all of these tanks are the same. What depends on what Leopard 2 is sent to Ukraine it is either going to be a Leopard 2 A4 or an A6. And the difference between those two, there is quite a gap in terms of armor and capabilities. It's estimated Russia has lost more than half of the 3,000 tanks they started the war with last year, destroyed in huge numbers by light, handheld anti-tank weapons, drones, artillery strikes and mines. And the Leopards, especially the older models, will be vulnerable to similar sorts of attacks. They're not going to be game-changing in the sense that they're kind of a wonder weapon. They're not. And having new armor is only a benefit if you can keep it in good condition. It takes time to train repair crews and establish supply lines for spare parts. So no, Leopards aren't a wonder weapon, but they'll be crucial in the months to come. Because without the West's supply, Ukraine would struggle to launch a spring counter-offensive this year, as their supply of Soviet-era tanks dwindled. Most important of all, though, is not what tanks Ukraine has, it's how they use them. And they've been taking notes from Russia's failures. At the beginning of the war, some assumed Russia's 40-mile-long column of military vehicles would steamroll into Kyiv. Instead, Russia sustained huge losses because, experts say, they didn't cover their tanks with enough infantry support to weed out Ukrainian anti-tank units. And they didn't provide effective air defense to protect them from drones. To avoid the same thing, the West is giving Ukraine hundreds of armored vehicles that can carry personnel, and they're providing more air defense systems to target enemy UAVs. On top of that, Ukrainian soldiers will receive intensive training in combined arms tactics, meaning branches of the armed forces, including infantry, armor, artillery, and the Air Force, work together to effectively attack the enemy. This approach is likely to give Ukraine options in the months to come. Kyiv says Russia has already launched a major offensive as Putin's generals pour soldiers into areas like Bakhmut and Volodar with the aim of taking the Donbass by March. Ukraine might rush its new armored vehicles here to defend the front. Or they could launch an attack farther east in Luhansk region where they've been probing Russia's defenses for months. Then there are rumors they might attack in Zaporizhia to try and split Russia's land bridge connecting the Donbass to Crimea, cutting Putin's forces in two. Whatever the approach they choose, Ukraine's objective is to prevent a stalemate. This will turn the current static trench warfare into a mobile warfare for the Ukrainian army, allowing them to get behind the Russians, cut off their logistics 
and hopefully get them out of Ukraine as quickly as possible. But Russia has dug a vast network of trenches, tank traps and landmines behind the front lines in case Ukrainian forces break through. And Moscow could have an estimated half a million mobilized troops to funnel onto the battlefield. Which means Ukraine is losing the manpower advantage it's held since the beginning of the war. And that's why they are pleading with the West for even more advanced weaponry. Having secured the tanks they want, the calls for F-16 fighters are growing louder. As for calls for longer range precision missiles like Attackums that could target supply lines deep in Russian held territory. For Ukraine to win, they have to get Crimea. You do it by isolating Crimea with long range precision weapons. F-16s of course would help. NATO and its allies have said no to this for now, using similar arguments to the ones they used against sending tanks. We have to be focused both uh, on the need for uh, supporting Ukraine, but also on uh, uh, preventing this war from escalating beyond Ukraine. And many experts believe that Crimea is a red line for Putin. And if that's threatened, there's a chance of the use of nuclear weaponry. But agreeing to send new armor, albeit reluctantly, was a clear signal to Russia that NATO would provide more advanced weapons as Putin ramps up his war effort. So a no to F-16s and attackums at the moment doesn't mean that it won't ever happen. Western countries are getting more involved in this war. For now, Ukraine has its tanks. They aren't enough on their own to win this war, but however the Ukrainians decide to use them, they will make life much harder for the Russians. They signal to the Russian side that Western countries stand by Ukraine. They are going to increase their military effort or their military support of Ukraine. This is going to have an impact on the battlefield. So so if Russia wishes, wishes to continue uh, this war, it's going to pay an even higher price.